Now let's look at the international side of climate policy. Al Gore and the European Union advocate a 50% cut in global emissions by 2050. But most of the growth in global emissions between now and then will come from developing countries. So those countries too will have to stop building coal plants. They too will have to limit their use of fossil fuels. It would be a humanitarian disaster. Globally, about 1.6 billion people lack access to electricity and about 2.4 billion still rely on traditional biomass, wood, crop waste, even dung for cooking and heating. If you look at developed uh, developing countries, the thing they need most of all is commercial energy and electricity. People in developing countries spend most of their day collecting fuel. They don't have time to go to school and get an education. It gets dark at night, so there's no study in at night because there's no electricity. Electricity is the essential commodity for any kind of growth and improvement in lifestyle. A coal-fired power plant would improve the lives of those villagers in many ways. Women would be freed from backbreaking toil. People would be healthier because indoor air quality would improve. Refrigeration would make food preparation easier and safer. Electric lighting would allow people to read and study at night the forests and the species dependent on them would be spared. I agree with former Vice President Gore that global warming is a moral issue. I think it is uh, preeminently a moral issue because we have a billion and a half people in the world who don't have access to electricity, for example. The world is not energy rich, it's energy poor. And if we are going to put energy rationing policies on the backs of the world's poorest people, they will have very little hope of ever achieving even a fraction of the well-being of the, the lifestyle that we have. India is an emerging industrial powerhouse, yet even in India, energy poverty kills. India has the largest incidence of snake bites in the world. About 50,000 Indians die from snake bites each year. Doctors there have developed an anti-venom antidote. So why is the death toll so high? The primary reason that most Indian health centers, particularly in rural areas where the snake bite is more prevalent, have no electricity, no refrigeration, no way of st storing the antivenom. The technology is there, we know how to generate electricity. The technology is there, we know how to make antivenom. Yet, 95% of Indians or thereabouts do not have access to it because they stay in areas which cannot store anti-venom in a refrigerated environment. Let me state the obvious. Poverty is the number one cause of premature death and preventable disease in the world. Global restrictions on fossil energy use would trap millions of people in poverty. Al Gore and others don't say exactly how they would stop poor countries from using coal, but some US and European politicians want to impose carbon tariffs on goods from China and other developing countries that refuse to limit emissions. I think the question to ask here is, can any of the potential effects of climate change be so great as to justify keeping the developed world in poverty? I think to ask that question is to answer it. 